Hello all. In this video, I am going to teach you how to write a C program to find out whether a given number is power of two or not. Right. So this is a very popular interview question in C programming interviews. So uh, listen to me very carefully, my dear friends. So I'll repeat the question once again. Write a C program to find out whether a given number is power of two or not. So first of all, when do you call any number as power of two number? Isn't it? Now, any number that takes the form 2 to the power of x is called as a power of 2 number, where x must be a positive value. For example, as you can see on the screen, I've given you a few numbers 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, etc. So these numbers are called as power of 2 numbers because they take the form 2 to the power of x. As you can see, 1 can be written as 2 to the power of 0, 2 can be written as 2 to the power of 1. 4 can be written as 2 to the power of 2. 8, you get 8 when you do 2 to the power of 3. You get 16 when you do 2 to the power of 4. 32 takes the form 2 to the power of 5. 64 takes the form 2 to the power of 6. As you can see, all these numbers will take the form 2 to the power of x. And that is why we call these numbers as power of 2 numbers. Right? Now, other numbers which are non-power of 2 numbers does not take this form. Right. So the question given to you is that you are supposed to write a C program to find out whether a given number N is a power of two number or not. Right. So to find out whether a given number is power of two or not, you can make use of a simple logic, but a very important and a tricky logic. The logic goes like this. Take the given number N bitwise and it with N minus one. And after doing this operation, if you get the value of this expression as zero, then you can consider n as a power of two number. But whereas if you take the num given number n bitwise and it with n minus one, and if it does not result in a value uh, zero, that is if it results in a non-zero value, then you can consider n as a non-power of two number. Let me repeat. Given number n bitwise and it with n minus one must result in a zero value to make sure that n is a power of two number. If suppose taking the given number n bitwise ending with n minus one doesn't result in a zero value, that is if it results in a non-zero value, then you can easily consider n as a non-power of two number, right? So the same logic has been written in the form of if else condition uh, here, as you can see. If the given number n bitwise ended with n minus one results in a zero, and that zero is equal to equal to zero, then you can consider that number as a power of two number, else that number is not a power of two number, right? So let us try this out practically with few examples. Now, so uh, before getting into, uh, you know, solving of this example practically, you must understand the truth table very correctly. So the truth table for uh, bitwise and operation is like this. Zero bitwise and with zero will result in a zero value. Bit, uh, 0 bitwise and with 1 will result in a 0 value. 1 bitwise and with 0 value will, will result in a 0 value. 1 bitwise and with 1 will result in a 1 value, right? So if both the inputs are 1, only then the bitwise and operation will result in a 1 value. Other combinations will always result in a 0 value, right? So with this understanding of the truth table of uh, bitwise and operation, let us solve that problem. Now, let me take few values like uh, 8, 4 and some other non-power of 2 values also so that we'll cross verify whether this lo logic really works or not, right? So as the first example, let me take the value of uh, uh, 8. So let me take the value of n as 8, right? So considering n as 8, now we have to find out whether this n is power of 2 or not, right? So with our basic understanding of mathematics, we know that 8 is a power of 2 number, isn't it? So if 8 is a power of 2 number, then when we do 8 and with 8 minus 1, which is nothing but 7. So 8 and with 7 must result in a 0 value. Only then we can consider 8 as a power of 2 number, isn't it? So let us go and verify whether it really works that way. Now, first of all, how do you represent 8 in binary format? Because we are working on bitwise operations. We have to represent those numbers in binary format, right? So uh, how do you represent 8 in uh, binary format? 
zero 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 one zero zero zero. Okay, so let me just give you a quick uh, recommendation or a warning over here. I am making use of only eight bits so that I can make use of the screen economically. But during your interviews, make sure that you use thirty-two bits because integer in C language will occupy thirty-two bits. So I would uh, suggest you to. Use 32 bits during your interview, but because I have to use the screen very economically, I'm making use of only one byte. That is nothing but eight bits. Okay. Having said that, eight in binary is represented as zero 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 one zero zero zero. This is eight in binary. Now I will have to take this eight and bitwise and with bitwise and with n minus one, which is nothing but eight minus one less seven bitwise and with seven. So how do you represent seven in binary? Zero 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 one 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 will be your uh, uh, binary uh, binary of seven, right? So when we do a bitwise and of eight and eight minus one, that is seven, we will get zero and with one is zero, zero and with one is zero, zero and with one is zero, one and with zero is zero, zero 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 zero, which happens to be a zero. Therefore, n and with seven. Is resulting in a zero. Zero equal to equal to zero is true. Then if condition becomes true, in that case the control will enter into the if condition and say print f percentage d, which is nothing but n, which is nothing but in our case eight. Eight is power of two, as shown. As we know that eight is a power of two, and this logic has been proved. Okay, so let us take one more number and figure out whether this logic really works, right? So let me take one more value of uh, uh, say four. Let me make four. As we know that four is a power of two number, and therefore even four and with four minus one should also result in zero. So let me just check that out. Let us take n value as four. Okay. So to represent four in binary, we say zero 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 one zero zero. So this is four in binary format. So bitwise and with n minus one, which is nothing but uh, three. Okay, which is nothing but three because n minus one, four minus one is three. So let us see how it works. First of all, let me remove this over here. Okay, so how do I represent three in binary? Zero, 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 one, one. This is three in binary. So four bitwise and with four minus one must result in a zero to prove that four is a power of two number, right? So zero and with one is zero again, zero. One and with zero again, zero. Rest is zero 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 zero. Yes, so we get the value of zero. Therefore, four and with four and with three, which is nothing but four minus one, which is three, is resulting in a zero value. Therefore, zero equal to equal to zero is zero is true. Okay. Therefore, if condition becomes true and then it enters into the if con if block and prints print f four is a power of two number. Right. So we also got that four is a power of two number. It means this logic is correctly working. Right. So to prove this once again, let us take a non-power of two number and see whether this logic correctly works or not. Right. So as we know with our expression that if it is a non-power of two number, then a non-power of two value of n and with n minus one must not result in a zero, isn't it? So let us cross-verify even that so that we can uh, uh, completely prove that this logic works. Right. So let us take the n value as say uh, six. As we know, six is not a power of two number. In that case, six bitwise and with six minus one must not result in a zero value, isn't it? So let me check that. Right. So how do you represent six in binary? You can uh, represent six in binary uh, like this: zero, 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 uh, zero, one, one, zero. So this is six in binary format. Now bitwise and with six bitwise and with n minus one, which is nothing but six minus one, which results in five. Okay, is equal to how do you represent five in binary? Zero, 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 uh, zero, one, zero, one. This is five in binary, isn't it? Now I will have to do the AND operation. After doing the AND operation, we'll see whether we get zero value or a non-zero value. That is zero and with one will result in zero. One and with zero will result in zero. One bitwise and with one will result in one. Okay, rest is zero, 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 zero. As you can see, you get the value as Four and this is not a zero value. This is a non-zero value. Therefore, six and with five, okay, will result in four value, which is okay when compared with equal to equal to zero will result in false, okay. 
false value that is if condition becomes false if a false says that okay so tells the control that not to enter into the if block and asks the control to enter into the else block and once it comes to else block it says print f okay uh, n value which is nothing but 6 is non power of 2 value isn't it it's a non power of 2 number so this logic completely works so it says that given a number n if bitwise ended with n minus 1 must result in a value of 0 to consider n as a power of 2 number whereas if n bitwise and with n minus 1 doesn't result in a zero value it means n can be considered as a power of 2 a non power of 2 number right so this is a very beautiful logic okay so you can use this logic during your interviews so let me actually show you the complete program for this so as you can see on the screen we have a complete program to find out whether a given number is power of 2 or not right so first uh, i say i include the header file yesterday h so we have a main function and I have created a variable n of type integer and I ask the user to enter an integer value. Then scanf function is used to take the value through the keyboard and the core logic is written as part of your if header. So if n bitwise and with n minus one results in a zero value, then you can consider n as a power of two number. Else you can consider n as a non power of two number. So hope you learned something new today. So meet you with more interview questions in the upcoming videos. Until then, take care. Bye-bye. See you.